everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kara Monroe, founder and CEO of Monarch Strategies LLC, a small consulting firm in Indiana that I started in 2022. On this channel, we talk about productivity, about running, running a small business, and just about life in general. Today, we are going to take a tour of my Obsidian Vault. Come along and join me. So as we take a look around my Obsidian Vault, um, we notice a few things that distinguish different Obsidian Vaults. And, and this is important because no two Obsidian Vaults will probably ever look exactly alike because you can customize a lot of things about Obsidian. That's one of the beautiful things about it. Um, so one of the first things that you notice is that I'm using a dark theme. And if you look on YouTube or you just open up your own Obsidian Vault, it might open in light theme. So there are sort of two levels of themes in Obsidian that you can customize. Um, one is, and we'll go here just to look at what that looks like. You can start with a base theme, and I actually use the dark theme as my preferred. If I want to switch it, I can switch to light, and then all of a sudden it's in light mode. So very, very easy to play around with that. And I'll go to, through themes in depth in a future video. Um, you can change your font size. You can then also do what are um, custom themes that are a part of the community. And so I use one, um, my favorite theme is one called um, Things by Colin Eckert. That's the one that I have applied right now. And so the theme will also control how text looks on a page and just the general feeling of your theme. You can create your own themes. It's a CSS file that you, you create. That's not something I'm going to probably go over in this series, um, but you can. One of the other things you'll notice about Obsidian when you open it up is um, sort of the look of the file explorer over here on the left. Everybody has a file explorer in Obsidian, um, and you can set it up however you want to. You can see that right now I have mine set up in a sort of a basic para structure, so project series, resources, and archives, um, courtesy of Tiago Forte's um, methodology. But I'm also playing around with some other strategies because Pear is kind of falling apart for me in a couple of areas. And I want to just tweak it a little bit, which is exactly what you should do. Um, the next thing you might notice if, if you've opened an Obsidian Vault, but you aren't sure where to start, and that's why you came to this tour, great, I'm glad to have you here, um, is that I have a calendar over here. Most people start with this links uh, view, but they don't start with the calendar. The calendar is an example of some of the different community plugins, and I'm just going to show you um, a couple of them. One of the great things about the calendar plugin is I can quickly see which pay, which days I have daily notes for in this vault. So I have daily notes for the 6th, 7th, and 8th in this vault. I can see approximately how many words are on those daily notes. So the 6th only has 250, the 7th has about 500, and that's because I know that each one of these dots means 250 words. That's a setting I could tweak, um, and I can change that so I can make it look um, exactly the way I want it to and, and work for me, which is one of the great tools, great things about Obsidian. Another thing about Obsidian is that um, no, pe no two people's graphs are going to look the same. So um, I'm going to actually move my graph. I'm going to drag it over here. There we go to the main window. And it's going to slowly reveal itself. It's very sexy, isn't it? Um, you know you're a nerd if you find a graph reveal sexy. Um, and so my graph is going to look different because of the um, kinds of data that I have in my graph, the way I've connected things, all of those sorts of things, everybody's graph will look different. Um, and it's a it's a great way to um, sort of explore your graph and your notes and let that idea of serendipity take over to just randomly, I'm not going to completely randomly pick on a note, but we'll see what is this note. Okay, this looks like a good one. I think this is a book note. Is this a book note? Yeah. So this is a book by Rachel Held, Held Evans called Inspired. Um, and these are my book notes from her. So you can see that. This is a great place, too, to see that theme in action. So you can see this is a, I think this is a level one header. Yep, that's a level one header. These are level two headers. Um, and then you can see how my tags are formatted. So it gives you an idea of just how you can um, customize the view of your database um, in Obsidian. I forgot what program I was like working in, sorry. Um, I do wanna show you one other thing about Obsidian that distinguishes it. This is not necessarily anything that's gonna look different from person to person, but I wanna make sure to show you one of the other really big benefits of working with Obsidian is in 
the fact that it is both local and can be synced. If you use the sync plugin, you can actually sync to mobile. You can even use the publish plugin to um, publish part or more all of your graph to the web if you want to, um, and you can control what gets published. Um, but one of the great things about it is that I can see any file um, in a in my hard drive um, because these are just stored for me they're stored in one drive um, but you can store them on a local hard drive too if you really want to control security so I'm going to show you a file this is my mind map and I'm going to drag this over so it hopefully takes up the whole window um, let's let's move you back over here to this little tab and this is another thing about obsidian there we go that's what I wanted this is another thing about obsidian you've noticed me dragging and rearranging um, different things you're gonna have your graph set up very or your screen set up very differently than I might and so did I zoom I zoomed out so much I can see it so you may never have the graph show, showing or you may not want the calendar showing you may always want the linked mentions showing um, you get to decide that and you can even have different workspaces saved for different purposes so maybe you have a content creation workspace when you want to be writing that has no distractions in it but then like your general working workspace might look a little bit different um, I want to show you this. This is an example of one of the plugins that you can use for Obsidian. It's called a, the, uh, I think this is Mind Map Extend. I'll, I'll definitely find that at some point and, and share it with you. Um, but this is an example of something that you can create in Obsidian. Now, this looks like a fairly complex mind map. You'll even notice, um, let me zoom back in with a little control here. I can actually click on these links and go straight to those pages um, to start to see some of the different work that I've done. I can navigate back to it and, and just very easily. But the beauty about Obsidian is remember this is just marked down on top of text files. So let's say I want to look at this source file. If I right click on it and I go to show in System Explorer, it has popped up down here. Let's see, I think it's right there. Yep, there we go. So here it is in my System Explorer, and I'm gonna see if I can do this without having, yeah, open with, and I wanna open it with Notepad, if it'll let me. Yep, there we go, and okay. And you can actually see that I can, I can pretty much read this page right here in Notepad. It's just a text file. So there's absolutely nothing about this that I would lose if anything would ever happen to Obsidian or to that plugin, that data, which is the most important part, this is just an alternative visualization of a piece of data, that data is still there. And so that's some of the beautiful power of Obsidian as we start to log into other things like the Data View plugin, which can let you query your database and, and actually see, or query your vault and let you see stats and details about different things and custom lists. Um, you'll see that. This puts a lot of power on top of very simple files that will be future-proofed, which was one of the amazing things about Obsidian. All right, so we've done enough preamble. In the next video, we are going to, I'll even come back to full screen here. In the next video, we are going to actually set up your first Obsidian vault. So come along on the journey with me.